Pastor Ross. Good evening, and welcome to another Into His Word Tuesday. For well, truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and aren't you so glad that he allowed us to be a part of it? Amen. I pray that the Lord bless you on today, and pray, pray that he continue to bless you. Amen. As we go to his word once again on tonight, let us go to Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. And we'll start reading from the first verse. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, start reading from the first verse. And verse 1 says, Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jephro, the priest of Media. And he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Hobram, the mountain of God. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, a bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, while the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Let us pray. Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity to declare thy word and to uh, preach thy word to thy people. And would, Father, that you anoint me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. I may preach a gospel and seize them with your Holy Ghost. Hide me behind the cross and let the blood of Jesus prevail. Lord, you said, if I go, you go with me. Open my mouth and you speak for me. You find me out in your word. Consecrate me now for thy service divine. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. For you are my strength and you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. I want to talk tonight from the subject, God is trying to tell you something. God is trying to tell you something. In the game of football, each team is, has what they call an offensive coordinator. This offensive coordinator, he calls the plays that should be ran on the field. However, occasionally or sometimes the quarterback will call what is called an audible. An audible is meaning that he, the quarterback decides to override the call of the offensive coordinator and call a play on his own. And oftentimes, all of us will result in interceptions or sometimes uh, or something that turns the ball over and give the ball to the other team. All right? Now, needless to say, the offensive coordinator, he, he, he becomes upset because the quarterback chose to change what he called and it failed. And it's the desire of the offensive coordinator to run plays with no audibles. All right. He knows what plays to run. Uh, he, he, he knows when they should be ran because he has a better view of the whole field than the quarterback does. And I say that to say sometimes God, our offensive coordinator, has a better view of the field of life than we do. And we need to run the plays he calls with no audibles. Come on, somebody. I stopped by tonight to give somebody this word that God is trying to call the place in your life. In other words, God is trying to tell you something. My Christian friends, it is an interesting phenomenon of how we sometimes hear, but we don't hear. The nation at large has what described by sociologists and psychologists as a communication problem. We have this communication problem in all walks of our lives. We find ourselves sitting in the midst of a society with all types of ways to communicate. We have a computer in our hand. 
We have so many different ways to communicate. You got Facebook, you have Twitter, you have all different types of social media. You have email, so many texts, all kind of ways to communicate. Yet we don't know what is being said. This communication problem, it addresses itself in all walks of life. Look at our government, tax proposal, tax problems, interpreted differently by, differently by the, uh, both the Democrats and the Republicans. You go buy a car, dealerships speaking one language, bank speaks another language, you talking another language, parents and children Define uh, there's communication problems, communication problem between parents and children. Children speaking one language, parents speaking another language. No connecting or coming together of the minds. Marriage communication problems. Wife speaking one language, husband speaking another language. They, they, they can speak words, yet these words have nothing to do with what they're really saying. Come on, somebody. Stop by to tell somebody. We, we even have a communication problem. It, it's found itself and made its way into the church. It found itself causing problems between God and the church, Christ and his disciples. Someone said, Ross, I, I, I hear what, what Jesus is saying. Well, perhaps that is true. You do hear what he's saying. You need to stop hearing what he's saying and you need to stop listening. You need to start comprehending. For true listening is not just simply hearing. Can I preach this thing? It's listening. It's comprehending. It's processing uh, what you've heard. Acting upon that what you have heard. So I want, I want each of us to know God is trying to tell us something. Has anyone stopped and took the time to see what God is saying? What is God saying in this pandemic? What is he trying to tell us in the midst of this virus that's, why, that's spreading like it is? People want to take the vaccine. Some don't want to take the vaccine, but you want God to take care of the virus. But you don't want to stop because of God and what he's saying about the whole thing. Christ, he wants us to hear. Christ wants us to comprehend. He wants us to become an avid listener. But even... In spite of all this, God keeps blessing us. You have a witness out there? He, he keeps blessing us. He keeps right on loving us through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Somebody tell somebody, God is trying to tell us something. Mm -hmm. In spite of us not listening, he keeps on blessing. He says to each of us, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Yet we follow everything and everybody but Jesus. He says, come unto me. Come unto me, you are that are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. We continue to come at the things of the world instead of Jesus. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock, and anyone opens up the door, I'll come in. The knock is continuously at our door, yet we refuse to get up and answer. He says to ask and you shall receive, but we're too lazy to pray. He says, seek and you shall find, but we're too lazy to read his word. He says, knock and the doors will be open. So, 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 but, but we're too lazy. We want a doorbell and don't want to even knock. Oh, I got to close and get y'all out of here because y'all don't like this. He says, we have not because we ask not. We won't even ask and believe by faith that he will answer our prayers. He says, with men, thing, uh, men, things are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Yet we trust in men more than we trust in God. He said, bring me a tenth of your earnings, and we bring only 1% or less. Preach, Ross. I tell you, God keeps on blessing us, and he says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Then I'll hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Got to close and get y'all out of here. Church, our Heavenly Father, who we call God, Lord has, has so very often been misunderstood by 
many who didn't really know him, and oftentimes by those who claim to know him, even to those to those who somehow have read about him, heard about him, and experienced the miraculous powers of him, still don't understand or know him. Even after he sent his son, Jesus, to come into our world and, and, and put on flesh and acquire blood, some of us don't and, and, and can't and, and, and won't understand his goodness and his grace. I guess we're so busy and caught up with ourselves and the things of this world that our attention and our attention span is somewhere carried away from the, what God is really trying to tell us. I can't, I can't sing the song, we can't sing the song of the church honestly anymore because we really don't understand what he's saying. We can't sing he walks with me and he, he talks with me and he tells me I'm his own and the joy we share, we tear it down no longer even more because we don't understand what he's trying to tell us. There's no doubt that he continues to walk with us. But are we really walking with him? Or do we have to, or he, does he, do we have to run sometime to, to catch up with us because we're going in the opposite direction? He talks with us and continues to speak to us and for us. But oftentimes we take him for granted. The joy we used to share and have in our churches have escaped into the distance. But if you look at the text, the text says God said to Moses, God said, God called to Moses out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. But are we like Moses? We hear God calling us, but we don't really listen to him to hear what he's got to say. Are we like Moses? It took Moses a chapter and a half to really understand what God was trying to get him to do. Because he was too busy trying to make excuses and not doing what he wanted him to do. Are we too busy and making excuses not to hear what the Lord is telling us? He's telling us, I'm going to get you out of this pandemic, but are we really listening to him? He said, I'm going to heal your body, but are you really listening to him? He said, I'm going to give you a breakthrough, but are you really listening to him? He says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take you places that you've never been before, but are you really listening to him? My father's children, God, is trying to tell us something. But are we too busy? Are we too busy trying to hear instead of just listening? I got to close. And I close with this. There's a story of a woman who was seeking the will of God whether she should take a trip to the Holy Land. She got the brochure, she got the pamphlet, and she got all the information. She read it and reread it and read it again. But she came to the conclusion as she was praying for the will of God to reveal whether she should take the trip to the Holy Land. Well, several weeks before the trip would actually uh, come, the night before she was to send her money that she saved, she, 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 she read a notice on the brochure that the tourists will be taking a Boeing 747 to Tel Aviv to New York, to, to, to Tel Aviv from New York. And she went to sleep asking for a sign. She woke up and her digital clock read 747. She said, well, that's the will of God. Church, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those other things will be added unto you. Are you seeking other things before you seek God? God is giving you a sign. God is giving you what you need. But are you really listening to what he's saying? God is trying to tell you something. But the question is, are you listening? To God be the glory for his word. To God be the glory. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Father, for continuing to speak to us. We thank you, Father, continue to, to allow us to be your children. Father, realize sometimes as, as the Heavenly Father, we as children, sometimes we get hard-headed. We don't listen. Therefore, Father, sometimes we have to be chastised and put back in our place. Father, we thank you for not giving up on us. We thank you for continuing to love us and continue to speak to us.
Father, oftentimes we make excuses for what you want us to do. But in the end, Father, we realize that your will is greater than our will. So we thank you for this word. We thank you for this time we shared. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. And the Lord said the same. We'll see you next week on uh, next Tuesday for another Into His Word. Amen.